worship you. God, you are so good. And we're going to speak the name of Jesus over each and every person that is hearing my voice right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that we can speak your name over our families. Father, we thank you that you're the great I am, that you're Elohim, you're El Shaddai. We thank you, God, that your plan is good, and we know that. We thank you, Lord, that you're with us in the high mountains and in the low valleys. We thank you, God, that you're with us on vacation, at work, at home with our families. We thank you for the many blessings and the favors. We thank you, Lord, for opportunity for growth and to spread your love. So, Father, Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would come and, and just move in our hearts and bring revelation, Father, and growth for the kingdom of heaven so that we can go out, Lord, and increase the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, right away, I am going to go um, to, let me see which one I got, because I have a bunch of stuff here. We're going to bounce around a lot, so I just want to, um, so, go to uh, 1 John, if you would, chapter 4, real quick. 1 John, chapter 4, is where we're going to start. And while you're going there, um, I am going to read. Yeah, I'm just going to read. So chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 7. So it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. That's our focus today. God is love. So Elohim, which I talked about last week, the name of God, the creator, you know, he's strong and he's mighty and he is the creator in Elohim. But God, God means love as well. So that's something for us to know. For God is love. It's who he is. It's who he's always been and it's who he will always be. So in this love of God, was manifested toward us that God had sent his only begotten son into the world that he might live through him. Who might live through him? We will. So let me say that again. So in this love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that he, that we, sorry, might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And then let's skip down to verse 16. It says, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. Again, God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Amen? Amen. Okay, so now I want you to go with me really quick to Acts 8, chapter 8. So when um, I was at Living Waters, that's where the Lord led me several years ago in 2000 around three I'm guessing and um, so that's where I met the Holy Spirit I realized like I had that awakening I had that redeeming moment you know like where God became alive to me well, like I and I actually um, embraced the love of God and who he was and that he loved me when I didn't deserve to be loved and so and then these people that were at this church loved me too it, not like loved me like gooey love you know but I mean they they cared about me like genuinely cared about me they weren't just you know doing what the world does it was different there so anyways um, after a while, I started, they had a Bible school in the basement for a while, and I went to a couple of the classes. Well, one of the classes, um, pa um, what was Pastor Tracy's husband's name? Do you guys remember? Yes. 
Dennis. Dennis, okay. So he taught a class. Well, in the class, one of the classes, um, at the end of it, we had to um, give, a, give a message. And so I chose Simon the Sorcerer. And I remember this message so well because in this message, I, I feel like I got my first revelation by the Spirit of God all by myself. Like, I just got it. Like, the Word became alive to me, and it just changed my life. It made me more hungry because all of a sudden I had that aha moment with the Word and how it's living. And so I actually got an A on it. You know, I um, did really well with it, of course, because why? There was revelation and life in it, and it was from the Spirit of God. And so anyways, I want to talk about Simon the Sorcerer because... Um, in verse 9 of chapter 8, it says, But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city, and he admonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And they heeded him because he had admonished them. Sorry. Astonished them. With his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracle signs and wonders which were done. Now, I want to stop there because in, back all them years ago, what God, the revelation that I got about it was about him believing. Okay, well, today it's different. Um, the, the message is the same, but it's a little bit different. And remember I said last week that the Lord had said, on Sunday, when I talked about going back to the beginning, that whole message on Sunday was God saying, I want you to go back, I want you to go back. And so I had very carefully circled, you know, in, in the Word of God, um, mir miraculous signs and wonders, because the Lord said that, that we were going to operate in that. And that um, but now hear me. So Simon the Sorcerer, was, was performing signs, miracles, and wonders. But his was sorcery. It doesn't say that he was performing these things. It was sorcery. He was a sorcerer. So the power that he had was not because of God and the Holy Spirit. It was a power. It was demonic powers. They're out there. If anybody knows anybody that lives in dark, in the darkness, you know, I mean, even if you ever experienced anything as a kid, I mean, you could literally lift people with two fingers through seances and Ouija boards. I mean, that stuff, I remember doing it as a kid, and I remember repenting for it as an adult because I willingly dabbled in the darkness, and so the darkness had some... Uh, you know, some hold on my life. And so then I got into, you know, some other things. And anyways, long story short, God delivered me from all of that. And I praise his name for it. Um, and so anyway, so what happened to Simon? So Simon himself also believed. And, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. And he was amazed seeing the miracles and the signs which were done. Okay, so now he's, he's following Philip. And he's, he's liking what he's seeing. But now instead of it being uh, sorcery, he's actually seeing the power of God. All right, so not very long ago, I seen some people um, had put out about God um, that, that there's not miracles today and there's not signs today and all that. That's not true. They're there, okay? However, what I really feel like the Lord wanted me to bring forth today was the fact that um, like we have healing rooms and we've got to see miracles happen in healing rooms but even before healing rooms just this room right here so many miracles had happened here from salvation but we ourselves are the miracle we're the miracle of God we are the miracle we are and so a lot of times 
Christians are always looking for signs and wonders and they follow people that do them. But yet in the Word of God it teaches that people are going to stand before the Lord and He's going to say, I never knew you. And they're going to say, but I cast out demons in your name and I, I did this and I healed this person and I watched this happen. He says, get away from me. I never knew you. And so why aren't we supposed to look for signs? Miracles and wonders. Now listen, it's not wrong to faith them and believe in them and go after them when God, the Spirit of God is leading us, right? But it's not so good that as a human being like Simon the sorcerer was, wanting them for our own glory. Wanting them to do what we want them to do. Amen. Because what happened in the beginning of the church is that in the beginning of the church, which was happening, is many, many signs and wonders happened in order to get the people to believe in God. In order to get the people to believe that there was a real God, not a man-made God. And so it would get their attention, and the church was built very, very fast because people's ears were turned through the signs, miracles, and wonders, okay? Well, the church today is supposed to be built on God's love. And he says, if you are my disciples, they will know you, not because of the signs and wonders, but because of what? How we love each other, right? And so when I went into living waters, and I did not feel love, so if anything, I was nasty, you know, not really that they knew, but in my mind, I'm judging them and I'm sneering at them and I'm thinking stuff. Because I, the first thing we want to do is we want to get you before you get us, right, in the world. And so I went into church that way. But what I encountered was the presence of God. And I encountered a peace that I had not known. I encountered love that I had not felt. Not just within me, but around me because of the people. And so even though I called them the ooh people and I thought they were all weird, right? I kept going back because there was something about the people and the presence of the Lord. And the presence of the Lord is what does the change. And so why am I saying this? Because I believe in signs, miracles, and wonders, but I don't feel like river of life is, is less than anything. I don't feel like I am less than anything. I've watched God do miraculous signs and wonders through me, right? And just because he does, and this, I was thinking about this the other day. I'm thinking, God, why did, why did all this happen all the time? It's like every place I went, something was happening. I had opportunity to minister the gospel. And the Lord said, one, I was building your faith for you to know that you were called by me and I'm going to use you. And that I love you. But I want you to follow me even when you're not walking in that. Amen. I want you to love me even when you don't see it on a daily basis. And it's so funny, I didn't even think about this, but um, you know, I, I listened to some of the theologians and the teachers and stuff out there. And, and it's funny because anybody that journals, you know, when you're really excited, you journal about a lot of stuff. But when you're kind of in days where nothing really happens, you don't journal everything. And so in the Word of God, sometimes when, especially in Acts, when the church was being built and the things that were going on, we think that it was happening every, 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 every single day. But in reality, it was put in the Word of God. Not that it wasn't happening somewheres every day. But are we still going to love? Are we still going to serve? Are we still going to run after God? And, our, and this is the other thing I, th I thought about. You know, so when, um, when I received my prayer language, um, and when we started the church, God said to me, to me, he said, do not put all the emphasis on speaking in tongues. Don't put that on prayer language. Because... And that doesn't sound right because we know that that's one of the evidence. But God says, you know, people have made it to be something to where other people feel like they're less than. And God doesn't love them as much. And they're not worthy to have that language. They're not worthy to walk in signs, miracles, and wonders and watch people, you know, be healed and watch the Holy Spirit. It makes them feel like God doesn't love them because that's what the devil does. So I've never, for many, 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 many years, you didn't even hear me, 
pray in tongues or speak out loud in tongues for many years. But up here, it was always happening. People that didn't never be in church before, I would go into my prayer language, but I would tell them what I was doing. I would tell them why I was doing it. And every time the Holy Spirit showed up and every time he did something miraculous for them. Every single time. So, it, but yet you got to understand that there's people out there that like, how come I've never seen a miracle? Well, if you were here when David's boot came off, you've seen a miracle, right? When your back was healed, you got a miracle. But listen, the word teaches that in the end days, there's going to be signs and wonders, many of them, and they're not going to be of God. So what we got to look for is his love. We got to look for a church that loves people, that accepts people that are different, that maybe they don't believe everything that you believe and walk the way that you do entirely, but if you concentrate on what you have in common instead of what you don't have in common, we're going to be okay. Because division comes through the judgment of, we're different. You know, you, I don't believe how you believe. Somebody, uh, many people probably think, why would God tell you not to put emphasis on that? Because God knew who he was going to be sending through these doors. Right. And the people that he was sending through these doors would have freaked out and thought I was the devil. Or would have freaked out who had never been to church and then comes up here for prayer and gently feels the love of God ministering to them. And they're like, they weren't afraid of it. And I didn't do it to do it. I only did it when the Spirit led me to. Because that's when He's moving. That's when He wants to do it, you know. There's times I do it at home just because I get into worship and that's something that I do before. I, you know, it's my, my relationship with God. And so Simon the sorcerer, what did he do? He believed and he was baptized and he continued and he kept seeing the miracles and the signs which were done. It says, now when the apostles who heard in Jerusalem that the Samarians had received the word and, and the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them who when they came prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, he had not fallen upon none of them. I don't know why. So is it wrong to pray? Like, the, your friends just got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is a, that's a miracle. That's awesome. But the miracle is you and I. We have been born of the resurrection of the King. Amen. We have been born again. We are. We, we are the ones that carry love in us greater than anything. Because the word teaches that the, the flesh is contrary to the spirit of God. So you cannot walk in the love of God in the flesh. You can't do it. And so you can't love people apart from God, really, without wanting gain. Now listen, even as a Christian, you can love and manipulate and love people for your gain. But pretty soon the Holy Spirit's going to convict you bad because you are operating as Christians out of love that was given to us from heaven. Amen. Through a sacrificed son, the blood of Jesus. And we said yes. And so that's why I just feel like with healing rooms, the things that we get to see and in here and in other churches, we're going to see more. But what is our hearts? Is our hearts after the healer or are we after the healings? You know, our, is our hearts, you know, yielded to God where we want to see people, you know, come to Christ? And back in them days, there was so many because nobody, they were building the church from the ground up from the very beginning. So, so was going on and you don't know what's going to happen when the rain starts here on earth we don't know there are so many unbelievers out there but the thing is is God's got to trust you with his ultimate powers right but it's got to come out of love it has to be for others it can't be to build a church or build a community or build you or be a Simon the sorcerer what did Simon the sorcerer when he seen that they were um, doing uh, signs and miracles he asked if he could buy it he wanted to give money to get that gift because he didn't understand right. and they told me you know what you better go pray pray that God doesn't pretty much just 
put you down right now because that is the wrong attitude of heart to have. You know, so was he believed? Did he believe and be baptized according to the word he did? You know, so we're never perfect just right out the gate. But as we come in into the body of Christ and we learn the word together and we understand who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us, that's why that song, Come Unto Me, and it says, pick up your yoke and learn me. Learn who I am. And that's why I talked about Elohim last week because it's so important to know Elohim is the one that created us. He's the one that made sure this church was built here in 1987 for all of us to be in it today in 2022. Amen. He did that because he's Elohim and he can. And I love that. But at the same time, I love that. I love what God has spoken. I believe every word of it. But I also know from experience that there are people out there thinking that God must not feel they're good enough because when I pray for somebody, I don't see a miracle. I don't get to, I don't get to see this happen and that happen, a leg grow, a back straighten up or whatever, you know. No. It's not about that. It's about what that person needs. When I got my miracle the very first time, I needed that. I believed in God. And I said, Lord, if you want to give this to me, I was so full of shame. I thought, there is no way he's going to heal me. But the pastor wanted to pray for me anyways. And I just shut my eyes. And I said, God, if you want to heal me, I know you can. You're God. You can do whatever you want. I had no understanding other than that I knew that God could do anything. That much I knew about God. And when my leg grew... It scared me, but I knew it was God. And when I stood up and they wanted to pray for my back, and my back did the squirrely thing, because I have this kind of a back. But yet, I didn't have to have the lift in my shoe anymore. I didn't have pain anymore. I have almost a reversed neck bone in my neck. It goes this way from an accident and so I had lots of trouble and God wanted to heal me Amen. because he knew that's what I needed yes. now not everybody needs that but back in the days of Acts they needed all of it all of the time and that those days might come again but what God wants us to be known by, according to his word in John 13, 35, that everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Amen. That is how he wants us to be known. Yes. Now, if we get all the other things that Jesus or God or the Holy Spirit wants to do through us, deliverance from, from depression, that's a miracle. Yes. Drugs. That's a miracle. Yes, people grow limbs in other nations, you know, and I don't know if they've, you know, done it here. But that lady that was in that wheelchair for all them years and got up all them years ago down in one of the revivals, and they kept walking her because she got up legs that had no muscles because she was in a wheelchair for too long, got up. And to the, she's still walking to this day and back in ministry. She was still in ministry in a chair. She wasn't going to let her condition stop her. Amen. She didn't say God didn't love me because I can't have what I want. I want to walk. She probably closed her eyes like me one of the hundreds and one gazillion times being prayed for because when you go to these services, man, people are on you like flies. You know, I remember being at services with Jen and actually having to protect her because of the people that were surrounding her, wanting to pray for her healing, trying to get her to get up out of that chair. You know, and they, they met well, but she would tell them, I know that I'll get my miracle, but I'm not standing up today. You know, she knew. She knows the Lord. And she doesn't not serve him out of the chair. She serves him in the chair. Pr 
Prior to her accident, she didn't serve the Lord. Prior to all my heartache and, and issues, I didn't serve the Lord. Not everybody has to have issues, heartaches, and things going on. And even as Christians, sometimes we go through stuff and we realize we still need our Savior. Life's not so great just because you got money in the bank. Money can't buy you peace. Money certainly can't take care of your health. The great physician can. But I just hear the, I hear the Lord saying the same thing what he told me about people feeling like there's something wrong with them because they don't get to see a miracle. Well, you do see them if you look in the mirror. Yeah. We are the miracle. Amen. We're the miracle of God. Amen. We are. And he said, if you lift me up, I'll draw men. I'll do it. I'll do it. Now, it's, I believe in signs, miracles, and wonders for this day right here. I mean big ones. <clears throat> but I'm going to go after the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Use me, God. Have me be obedient. Help me be brave. But I want to do it moved by you with a heart for you Amen. and not to be able to say I did this. Amen. God did this through me. I was petrified when my sister came up and telling me I need to go down and pray for that girl that got drugged by a horse. I was petrified. I already knew God was going to send me. I was pacing back and forth up at camp praying in the spirit. I did not want to go down there. I was so afraid of persecution. So all the way down there Instead of praying for the little girl that I'm going to pray for, I was praying for me. God, you better be there. You're sending me. You better protect me. Those people are going to hurt me. They're going to chew me up. You know, and when I got down there, God just did what he always does. When he sends you, he'll perform. When he calls you, he'll do it. So Simon the sorcerer wanted the miraculous powers but it would have taken him back to what he used to do he did them for his own gain it wasn't for the glory of God and to build a church it was going to be for him so much he wanted it so bad he wanted to pay for it because all he knew was to be a sorcerer his whole life and, he, and this wasn't sorcery this was the Holy Spirit moving and doing what only he can do. But it really made me start to think about the times, you know, that are coming. And I'm not afraid, but I want to be aware. You know, it says, you know, to test everything. But God says, they're going to know you're my disciples by how you love one another. Not by how many miracles that are performed through you. Because people that don't know me can perform miracles but not because of me, not in my name, not because of to give me glory. It's for them. Because his love is so strong. And I'm, you know, sometimes I think about it and I think, you know, there's some really evil out in that world. Some of the things I've heard and read and it's just, I don't know how a human being can do that kind of stuff. I praise God. That even when I did not really know him, I was not like that. I praise God. I praise God for my upbringing. I praise God. And, and I just know that we are his beloved. We are his miracle. We are his disciples. And people will know that we belong to him because of how we love one another. And even though in your flesh you're saying, man, I can't stand it when this guy does this to me all the time. Or I, this mannerisms drive me nuts. But yet you work through that flesh and you still bring love by the spirit to somebody. Because the flesh and the spirit don't mix. And so you're always fighting that flesh man when the Spirit of God wants to move. And so we have to die more to that flesh man. And it's not always easy. But God wants to do some great things in us and through us. And so anyways, I just wanted to share that tonight because I feel like there's a lot of people out there running around 
feeling like they're less than because they can't, they can't, they've never, or they, they, they don't get to see signs, miracles, and wonders. Um, in reality, they probably have, they just don't realize it because they really don't absolutely know what a miracle is. And we are the miracle of God. And we're born out of His love. And so um, we were <coughs> singing and um, we sang Your Love is So Strong in pre-service. You know, and yes, yeah, strong enough to calm the storm of fear and unbelief. Fierce enough to break the cords of death that clung to me. See, when you really think about that, and I know that some of us take it into our now moments, but I mean, really, we have been saved. Saved. Yes. Saved. We have so much to be thankful for. Amen. You know, even all the things that we walk through, all of the pain, the sufferings, the arthritis as you're getting older and different things that are going on, things don't always go the way you want. Um, there are precious things in you that God wants to do, and if we focus on all of the negative in our lives, Amen. we're not going to be able to do what God has asked us to do. Right. His love is strong. Oh my gosh, His love is strong. Can you imagine giving something that you love so much and say, I'm going to let my child die, Tammy, because that's what it's going to cost for you to live. Who would do that? God did that. For God so loved the world that he gave. So God is asking us to give. To give his love. And I don't mean mushy love. I know what you I know you all know what I'm talking about. It's letting somebody even ahead of you in a grocery line when you're in a hurry. That's right. It's what my husband does every time we go somewhere. So he always lets everybody else have the right away when I know that it was our right away. <laughs> you know? They don't know that he's a Christian. But he does. You know, it's it's pouring out love on somebody that you know really doesn't, doesn't deserve it because you know all about what they've done. But yet, they're broken and you pour out on them. And you let them know that they are worthy to be sons and daughters of God and worthy to be loved. That life is not over. Yeah, it might be difficult for a while because it's something that you might have done. There's consequences. But when you bring encouragement and hope, it makes a difference. And some people might do this at you, you know, like, just get away from me, you know, you make me sick. It's not you that's making them sick. It's the love that you're displaying because they've never received it the way that they should. We can't make anybody become a Christian. They have to choose. But we're the disciples. And we will be known by how we love one another. Amen. Yes, I believe many of us are going to see and do signs, miracles, and wonders. But that's not the number one thing. God did that over and over and over and over and over in here for years. He's still doing it. But we don't have all those numbers like that. But they're going to come again. No. But what if? What if? All you do is just display his love. Are you going to be okay with that? Yes. I am. I want to see people healed. I want to see people delivered. I want to see all these things that I've seen. They were pretty exciting, especially, you know, it, it built my faith so strong. It built my confidence to be so great. But we can have that the more that we know who He is. That's right. And then He'll do it That's right. through us. So just continue to love because His love is strong.
So it says, whose power has overcome every insecurity. Everybody in this world fights insecurity at some level. And heaven moves and demons flee now as I lift my voice and sing, Oh, your love is strong. Isn't it funny that, Oh, your love is strong, moves demons? They can't stand it. See, that power, the power is in the love. Amen. That's why that song, Power of Love, transformed me all them years ago. I didn't want anything. I didn't want to be a pastor. I didn't want to go save people. I, didn't, I just wanted to love Jesus. I just could see him transforming me because that's what he does. Christians should be nice people. Right. Not the worst people at the restaurant complaining that's right. and being so nitpicky. That's right. Sometimes waitresses don't want to work on Sundays. But anyways, it's close enough to hold me near when fear is crippling. See, we're going to have these things happen in our lives, but His love is so strong. The power is in His love. The power of the cross is in His love. For He loved us all so much, His creation. Elohim loved His creation, and Satan came and stole it. So he created a way for us to get back. He loved us so much that he gave his son who he loved so that we could be loved and come back to who he is and love a fallen world and love a fallen people and love even the people that are Democrats or Republicans. You don't necessarily agree with their stuff but if you have a person standing before you, you should love that person. Amen. I'm going to close with the story really quick. And then we're going to close with that song. Your love is so strong. So I go to go to Florida. I am exhausted, ready to go. All I want to do is just go to Florida and take care of my parents' last wishes. And I start getting hit with this warfare on the day of going. And I'm like, this is crazy. I get on the plane. I sit down in the middle seat because my sister can't hear out of this ear. And so she was by the window. So I ended up in the middle seat. And um, this guy sits down beside me. And I noticed him out in the, in the foyer of the airport. And there was this long line of all these priority people getting on. And he's going down, are you priority, are you priority, are you priority? And um, they're like, yeah. And he goes, jeez. And he comes over and he throws his stuff down and waits on the corner. He's waiting for everybody to pass by. Well, guess who sits by me? <laughs> this guy. Crazy. So I'm sitting there and um, he says, so hi, I'm so-and-so. And I'm like, hi. And he says, well, what are you guys going to Florida for? And, we're like, well, you know, we're going to go take care of our parents that are up there. And they literally were right above our heads, you know. And, um, and he's like, oh, okay. And, and, uh, and he says, oh, you mean like, oh, he says, well, do you have a pastor working with you? I said, no, actually, I am a pastor. And he goes, really? So am I. I'm like, oh, cool, you know. And um, next thing out of his mouth was horrible. Now, mind you, I don't belong to a pastor's club. I don't belong to anything except for Jesus. And I love people. So this man is sitting next to me, and the first thing he wants to talk about is politics. You all know I don't do politics. One, I don't even understand them, so we don't talk about them. And God didn't ask me to preach about politics. He asked me to preach the Word, so that's all I do. But he was telling me all this stuff. And then I, praise God, we had masks on. And, um, and I'm just sitting there. And then the next thing I know, he told me how tired he is of the church. I'm tired of the people. I'm tired of the church. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, you are? And he's like, I am. They are this and they're that and they're this and they're that. 
And I said, well, that's why as ministers of the gospel, we're supposed to be preaching the love of God because people don't know how to love each other. And every time he would cut me off and I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking, God, this is either the devil or this is a divine appointment. And I'm thinking it's the devil because this is not good, right? So I'm praying within myself, praying in my prayer language, saying, God, do you have anything for him? God, is this, what's happening here? You know, I look at my sister and she's like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you know, and um, she, she can hear out of that ear. So the next thing I know, he tells me about a book that he wrote. He's a very intelligent man. And already God started speaking to me about his issues and his stuff, right? And he told me that how bad the church is, how bad the people are. I said, well, gosh, that's different for me. And I'm probably going to cry. I said, you know, ministers of the Gospels are supposed to be standing up and loving God's people right. and bringing forth the word. Not caring all that much about politics and not caring about all that religion that you're telling me and not caring about all this stuff over there. And I and he goes, but and he kept interrupting me and he's a really intelligent guy. And um he was um a chaplain for twenty years in the in the military in the Air Force. So that was where his his background and his training was from and then he he does some ministering here and there, but he doesn't have a church. And um, I was like, "Jeez, thank you, Jesus," you know. But um, but all of a sudden, I got really I, my eyes teared up, and I was so grieved because I didn't see no love. But what God did give me is He gave me a word for this man, and I waited until it was the right time and then I was able I said okay it's really funny how you how you use your language and I just said well let me tell you what I'm hearing he became quiet so we had some kind of familiar thing that okay she's hearing something from heaven I I need to hear this so what I heard from heaven is that a long time ago, the enemy came in through all these things. Because in military, you know, there's a lot of stuff. And um, in that, the devil stole from you. And I said, and what God wants to do is take that away and give you back what you had. So I, and he listened. He's, literally, he's sitting there like, like this, really listening to me. And um, I said, I really think what you should do when you get to your condo on the beach, that you need to take a good long walk with the Holy Spirit because He is alive and well. Amen. And He loves you so much. And what He put in you is for His people. But the enemy has come in and made you where you're at today. And it can happen to anybody. That's right. That's right. Now, I'm not too sure that was a divine appointment. I felt like it was from the devil. Because shortly after that, he came back, you know, with, he received it. He goes, wow, that, I never really ever thought about that before. That's like, yeah, that stolen really registers with me. And he's a very intelligent man. And then he wanted to tell me about his other book, and he pulled out his thing, and I looked at my sister, and I just started talking to her. But by then I was getting frustrated. Like, the grace had lifted. Like, I knew that I could not tell him anything else because I was grieving. Why was I grieving? Because the Holy Spirit in me was grieving. Yes. But I had to get past the offense of the stuff that I was hearing because I love the church. I, it hurts me when I hear other people talk about the church, because I feel like they're talking about me. Not just because I'm a minister of the gospel, but because we are the church. And, and, and so when people say the church is this and the church is that and the church is all this and that and religion, there's a lot of that, yes, but there's a lot of good out there too. But even ministers like this guy, he just really needed to be loved on and know that God still wants to use him. And the Lord showed me he had a marriage issue. Pretty soon he's sitting there and he's got real quiet. He's looking up there and he said, and my marriage is in trouble. And I'm already like crying on the inside. I'm like, yeah, I know. You know, because God showed me this about him. And, and, and the thing was is that 
Um, I hope he doesn't watch this. <laughs> so I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm like, so he gives me his card and I'm going to cry and um, he wants me to go and read his books or whatever and I, you know, you guys, and, pff, that don't happen, but, um, and so he goes to the bathroom and I'm sitting there and the Lord said, I don't have no cards. I, I have no cards. I have nothing. I'm just me. I don't travel with a bunch of stuff to give out. You know, luckily, if I, you know, my stuff, if I, I just had nothing, you know. <laughs> and the Lord says, I want you to take out a piece of paper and I want you to write down River of Life Ministry. And I want you to um, tell him and give it to him. I said, God, I don't want to give it to him. He's not going to like me. Because I'm everything that he's not right now. But everything probably he used to be. Yeah. And um, But it's not just him. There's many ministers out there like that. They're people. And there's ministers in this community that don't like me at all. But I still got to love them. Right. My flesh wants to say, you get them before they can get you. And God's saying, you just keep your nose out of it and keep your eyes on me. And you find your confidence in me and you find your love in me because I'm the only one that can fulfill what you need. You can't. These people out here can't do it. And so this man comes back from the bathroom. <laughs> and he sits down and I said, so the Holy Spirit told me to give you this information about our church. So if you're ever led, you can go watch a couple of services, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to like me. He goes, why wouldn't I? I said, trust me, you're not going to like me. I said, but, I said, you're going to find Jesus and you're going to find love. Because one of the things that he had said to me, uh, talked to me all about worship, how it needs to be coming out of the book of Psalms and some about Calvinists. I don't know what Calvinist yeah. people are and but you know they're Christian reform churches down in Holland and all that. But anyways, I'm like, well let me tell you something about worship. I said worship doesn't have to be the way that man thinks it needs to be. And I said, I know and that it's we should be worshiping God and lifting God up. But hear me out. Because we do that. I said, but there was a season in our church where there was a drug rehab that came in the people who wanted to come to church who had not been to church ever or had very little churching or from other, you know. I said, so the Lord always led us with high rough praise in the beginning. That middle song was always a song about how God loved us and delivered us despite our junk. I said, every service, somebody got something out of that song. The next song was a reverence toward the Lord. But I said, don't you think that that's an act of worship right there in that middle song when people are giving their lives and having Holy Spirit moments? I mean, somebody's seen the sky open up, the roof open up, and they seen, I mean, they were just scared and blown away. So God knows, well, you can't, I said, you can't dictate worship. Worship is whatever God wants it to be. And I said, no, we're not supposed to be doing some of the stuff out there. I totally hear what you're saying. I said, but if we didn't have that middle song, many of those people that were touched and received Jesus and realized that God loved him in that middle song, they found out that they were worthy to be loved. Then they can worship God and lift up his name. And he received that. So you never know why. I still think it was not a divine appointment, but I think God worked anyways because I was pretty frustrated. But I think that um, I think I was known as a disciple that day because I did love him, and I did feel bad, and I did weep for him, and I did pray for him before we got off the plane. And um, 
I just prayed with the Holy Spirit, had me pray, and it was very moving, and I knew that there was power in it. Um, and so I think about him once in a while, um, and I believe that God is going to do a work in his life. And mine, too. I mean, I didn't like, I was very uncomfortable. But usually when you're uncomfortable and you hate what you're doing at the moment, if you can get your eyes on Jesus, he's going to use you for your purpose. Yeah, so that was quite the day. So anyways, let's pray. Lord, I just thank you that your love is so strong, and I know, God, that I pray you take this word out by your spirit, and then everybody hears it in their own language. God, you perform the signs, miracles, and wonders, but we are your greatest miracle. We are your greatest sign of what love can do. <laughs> and we're the greatest wonder to the world because they don't understand this kind of love. But I thank you that you've called us into it. I thank you that we've said yes. And I pray, God, that we will hear you, that we will be obedient to you, that we'll move with you, God, and that we will be used by you to build your kingdom. God, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. amen.